probably why he only got five verses in the Bible. Can you imagine someone writing a whole book on Elkanah? It would just be called How to Live a Normal Life. Nobody would buy it because we all want the extraordinary. We don't want the mundane moments of King David when he was just playing the harp before Saul. And nobody's complimenting him. Nobody's saying, you're the greatest, David. No one's doing a video of David. Like, can I get a highlight reel, David? It's just the day-to-day. -day. He had to learn how to find God in that. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah, people that can't find God in the day-to-day -day tend to be very dysfunctional because they need a highlight all the time. Mm -hmm. They're either a highlight or they're a low light. They just can't be normal. Either heaven's happening or they're like, I'm going to find hell somewhere. I need a tragedy or a triumph. I'm either breaking through or I'm so depressed I could die. Mm -hmm. It's never just temperate. They need some type of crisis because we become so used to, we become adrenaline junkies and dopamine junkies. We like to hide. It's, we always try to get high off Jesus instead of trying to just be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. If everything Ooh. is going too good in your life, they'll say, what temptation could I fall into today? I like to feel restored all the time. So I'm going to fall into a sin so I know that my daddy loves me. They don't know how to they don't know how to live for God on a consistent basis. And living for God and getting closer to God has a lot to do with being consistent. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Sounds all right. Yeah. Throw me out of here. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you work a normal nine to five. And something crazy is happening every day. You're going to quit because I just need a normal day sometimes. And when Elkanah showed up, God wasn't speaking. God never even spoke to him. God gave Hannah the word from the priest. And just because the miracle didn't ha happen specifically to him, and God never spoke to him, that didn't disqualify him or mean that God didn't have his hand on his life. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't always need a miracle or a highlight to be qualified by God. You don't even need a test to have a testimony. Amen. Oh, my oh, goodness. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. Some, Amen. People go their, some people go their whole life looking for a test. They go looking for giants that don't belong to them. They say, I'll just kill the giant just to kill it. And the giant's like, I didn't even come here to fight you. What are you doing? And they're like, yeah, but I want to fight, though. A testimony doesn't always need a test. Sometimes the greatest testimony is that you trusted God when nothing was happening. As a matter of fact, if you look at the problems of God throughout Scripture, God spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. God spoke to Job out of the whirlwind. But Samuel was in the house of the Lord, serving the Lord, doing the normal, mundane things of serving God. Amen. And the Bible says the voice of the Lord came to Samuel and called him to be a prophet. Amen. But his testimony was, I served God in the house. His testimony was, I was faithful to God in the house. And when no miracle was happening, when God was speaking, I stayed consecrated. That's a testimony. Yeah. That I that's a testimony that says God kept me. God had his hand on me. Yeah. I could have went astray. I could have backslid. Amen. I was one step away from death. But God had a hand of protection around me. That's a miracle. Yeah. You are a part of the only thing in this whole earth that will be talked about that went out conquering. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is the church of God. John said, whatever overcomes the world has been born of God. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad you've been born again? Amen. Amen. The water and the of Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So Elkanah is a Hebrew name. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the word El in front of his name means um, God, just like the word Elohim, the everlasting God, or El Shaddai, the almighty God. Uh, yes. Amen. Amen. So Elkanah means um, purchased or redeemed or possessed. So Elkanah is a God purchased, a God redeemed, or a God possessed man. Ooh. And Elkanah shows up at a time when there's no king in, in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. Wow. So that means the world was a mess. And his home was a mess. The Bible said that um, he had two wives. 
And I'm not going to dig too deep into that relationship. But anytime a man had more than one mom, one wife in the Old Testament or in the history of mankind, period, mm -hmm. it was never a good situation. <laughs> and, not, and not only was the world a mess and his wives were fighting, there was corruption going on in the church. The church was a mess. And 1 Samuel 4.15 lets us know that. It says the priest of the temple, Eli, was old and blind. Now there's nothing wrong with being old and blind physically, but it has a spiritual meaning. In another translation, it says he was blind and fat. I think it says in Spanish, it's y suego y gordo. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't have to do, we're speaking Spanish today for some reason. <laughs> it didn't Great have Lord. to do with his weight physically. It meant he was cardinal. There was too much cardinal silent. <laughs> there was too much carnality in the church. And it started with the leadership. It was lack of prayer, lack of fasting, oh. lack of evangelism. The leaders of the church lost the vision. Wow. He was blind. He didn't have the burden anymore. He didn't have the passion anymore. He was letting his two sons, Hophni and Phineas, steal sacrifices from the church. Ooh. They became greedy. And mm -hmm. Eli was honoring his sons over God's sacrifice. Oh, man. Amen. 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 And the Bible says year after year, Elkanah went up to this temple to worship and sacrifice to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. So here comes Elkanah, a God-purchased man, a God-redeemed man, uh -huh. a God-possessed man. He comes to the church, and everybody's doing what they want. They're living in sin. The priests are corrupt. Nobody's worshiping. Nobody's lifting the name of Jesus. Everything's quiet. Everything is just routine. The people come and sing a few songs, and then they get the church service out the way and they leave. Mm -hmm. But there's a man there, a God-possessed man. And he says, I don't care what they say about me. I'm God-possessed. If nobody praises, I'm going to praise. Amen. If nobody shouts hallelujah, I'm going to shout hallelujah. Yeah. If nobody's evangelizing, yeah. I'm going to evangelize. Because I'm a God person. Yeah. I'm a God person. Hallelujah. I'm a God purchased man. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I don't know about you, but I came to serve God all the way. I came to worship all the way. I came to stop all the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. I came to dance all the way. I came to live holy all the way. I came to hurt my brother all the way. Hallelujah. I came to put my hand to the power. And I'm not looking back. Today in the Hallelujah. 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 